Hi, are you currently an art student uh, looking to improve your skills, particularly in the art fundamentals, and you're not exactly sure how to navigate that? It's 2023 currently, and there's a lot of information out there. So perhaps you're either getting overwhelmed with the sheer amount of content that's getting delivered to you, both free and paid on platforms like this, like like with YouTube, maybe it's online schools, maybe it's mentorships, maybe it's just something like Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, where you're getting loads of information and maybe some of that is conflicting each other, or maybe it's really just overwhelming you, so you're not sure how to navigate these very precious particular earlier stages when it comes to learning. It's been many, many years, over, well over a decade since I was at those stages, but I currently work with a lot of students at those various levels, so I'm constantly reminded that this is a very important topic, and that's why I wanna cover it today. It came up very heavily in my online uh, mentorship, uh, the group one that we run monthly, and a lot of students were tackling things in different ways, and there was a lot of confusion about what and when to implement measurements of time into your studies, into your routines, and into your artistic creative practices. So that's what I'm going to navigate today to the best of my ability. I'm going to show a few clear examples and just articulate when to time yourself, when not to time yourself, and how to approach different types of fundamental projects to improve. This, of course, is going to come down mostly to your own personal goals the subject matter and the complexity for how you're approaching it and your own individual learning styles. So let's get into this and talk some art. And if you're new here, I'm Tyler Edlin. I've been an artist, instructor, concept artist guy for, for well over a decade, and I'm here to help you today. So long ago, back when I was just breaking into this field, I would see images or paintings labeled speed paintings. Now this is so old it is before YouTube, so I didn't really know what that meant, right? I just see people producing what I thought were exceptionally good imagery, better than I could do, and they were calling them speed paintings. And they were saying, oh, I did this over the course of an hour at lunch on Wednesday. Oh, you know, literally banging my head. And it just gave me a sense of urgency, false sense of urgency, because I should not have had it, to wanting to create faster and faster. And I do feel social media, things like TikToks, YouTube time lapses, these have gotten progressively worse. And they are very harmful for a lot of students looking to learn and improve. Uh, it just makes us feel like we have to produce faster and faster. And it's very unrealistic. And for a lot of people, it is not the way to train fundamentals. Sure, setting a time limit has its benefits and its certain practical places. And that's what we're going to talk about next. But there is a time and a place and different circumstances for that. And in what I'm about to say is certainly not a one-size-fits-all, absolute, hard or fast sort of rule, right? You got to take what I'm saying, of course, with a grain of salt. But if you're doing really focused, set studies, like you see here on screen right now, I'm just going through the basic rhythms and shapes of a few landscapes using limited values I'm not really applying uh, airbrushing and overlaying. I'm avoiding texture. Everything I'm listing here is a restraint that I'm putting on these with one of the strains being a time limit. I simply want to just do each of these within 10 to 15 minutes. How does that benefit me or how does that benefit anybody exactly? Well, it allows me to just f fundamentally, it allows me to focus on one fundamental at first that is value and shape or shapes of value some of the most important fundamentals to nail in any discipline whether you're doing figures and characters to props and full-on environments 
Um, shapes are a large part of the structure of anything when we're drawing, painting, heck, sculpting, we, they would be forms. Uh, and they should not be rushed. And if I just isolate the variable doing a, a study and a practice like this, I'm not worrying about color. I'm not even worried about lighting, not worrying about texture, not really worried so much about brushwork. I'm just focusing on shapes of value. And by putting a time limit on that, I'm forcing myself to just focus on those and not worry about literally everything else that I just listed. So it forces me to prioritize every little movement and stroke to accomplish that very specific particular goal. So by compartmentalizing your progression, whether it's in shapes or you just want to practice line, or maybe you're doing a color study, so you're doing the same thing, but instead of values, you're throwing swatches of color down. It's a great way to isolate these variables so that you're just focusing on one thing and one thing only because it's easy to get overwhelmed and if we try to practice every fundamental at the same time when we're starting out it can be very cumbersome and certainly very frustrating the other benefit of timing specific studies like this or particular practices whether you're doing drawing spheres or practicing cubes in perspective right you're isolating variables so what this also helps by doing timelines on these is to establish routines when you can establish a routine it helps with your overall pacing right so you don't burn out and it will also help you establish good habits we can't always rely on motivation to do anything on a given day right it comes and goes our inspiration is the same as well but if we instill habits of oh i'm going to practice this for 30 minutes a day or do drawing you know 10 minutes a day over here right it its routines and its habits. And that's something way more reliable you know, to put into practice. And it takes about two weeks of doing anything, I feel, uh, to build a good habit. All right, so all that's great and everything. Uh, we just learn setting specific time frames for doing fundamental studies, like perspective things, boxes, cubes, shape design, rhythm, can be really helpful in helping us focus on one particular task or thing to improve. When would that not be a good idea when it comes to working creatively? I feel that would be when we're developing uh, portfolio pieces, uh, when we're doing more complicated long-term projects. You know, we don't want to say, hey, I got to do this in six hours or I have to do this in 15 hours. I don't think that's that beneficial at all to most people and in most scenarios. It simply just won't allow for a very deep understanding and comprehension of that particular task that you're working on. So I feel when it comes to portfolio pieces and projects, rather than set again a specific hourly uh, time you know, allotment, set a time frame, right? So imagine, okay, I've got a piece, a new portfolio piece. It's got an illustration. It's got a fancy character. Give myself like a week or two and then break that uh, two week time frame up into more like maybe like individual days. So like three days I want referencing and basic preliminary sketches done by one week in, I want the best sketch cleaned up and a week and a half in, it's all gonna be flatted, you know, with cleaner line, flat colors, and then I'll spend, you know, week two or whatever in terms of just coloring, rendering, and lighting, right? So it's all time frame based, not a specific amount of hourly time into each particular category here. And this is just really helpful for projects because they have a certain amount of complexity to them that just requires more focus and time to kind of really grind those out. So for example, I've got, um, right, Keenan Jackson's work up here it's like all beautiful a lot of it gets really in depth and and complicated in places and he's been a patron he's been working on this task you know we set up for him right here he did de develop a, a crane we wanted to push his he wants to push his design skills and really break things down that just requires more referencing it demands more planning and it's going to not exactly land the first try he might have to develop a crane or four 
over you know a week or two and then go back to the drawing board when he kind of finds an error or something that doesn't necessarily work out but you can kind of see here from this example he's really thinking things through and he's trying to make this work this is something that should not be rushed a few side benefits of breaking your work into time frames like this is that if you do get client work and, and you start working with commissions and everything you'll potentially know a little bit better what to charge because you'll know how many working days it may take you to do or you'll know how many you can fit in to a given week or month so that could even help with budgeting because you have to know yourself well enough to know how fast you could particularly get a task done so what Keenan's working on here, what you guys could potentially improve in, in your own work when it comes to bigger projects and portfolios is you, it'll really, it will really show you what fundamentals you know versus what fundamentals you don't know because you have to put it all together in terms of like a pipeline. Um, it's going to demonstrate your understanding for what sequence of steps to do and when. And over time, that can be very measurable to see how long or how fast it will ultimately, of course, take you. All right, so let's go to our third category here, right? We've got time frames and time limits, you know, specifically. When to do no time at all? Well, that's simply when you want to create for fun, when you don't want to measure anything, when you don't want any pressure on yourself to improve something specific maybe you just want to sit down and paint right and that's the beauty with this there's always a time to do that right when you want to creatively and artistically just get something out of you when you want whether you want to express a certain emotion a certain color palette or maybe you just want to play around with an idea just to see where it goes it will absolutely not be beneficial at all to stick a time limit on that now nah, have some fun with it right you have to work you have to play uh, but I like if I want to improve something, yes, I do like to improve my focus with strict time limits. And if I want to work on a personal project, I need to gauge how long it's going to take me. But yeah, when I just want to paint for fun, I got to let that fly. So it's great for when you're experimenting, right? When you're just trying to learn a new technique. Heck, if you want to learn a new process, like going from VR to 3D to 2D, or whether you just want to do a blender model or something and try to paint over that. Like this is just where you can experiment and, and learn adaptability when it comes to processes and stuff. And that's something I feel like you just shouldn't rush. But if you were to apply that same uh, process to uh, a project, then you yeah, time the project, see how long it takes. So of course, what I do end up recommend most students that are either maybe on the tail end of just learning all their fundamentals or just like to switch things up, take a balanced approach. I think if you just too, if you do too many regimented studies, you know, you're gonna get bored or burn out or just simply get frustrated. If you do too many projects, like uh, my good uh, friend and supporter, uh, Benaya, you're gonna burn out because you're gonna realize that you're dropping 40, 50, maybe 60 hours on a particular project. You don't get to post anything for weeks, maybe months and you just want a little bit of ray of sunshine on you. You just want a little dopamine hit. You just want to finish something and having something small, something more incremental would absolutely be what the doctor orders, you know, when it comes to creativity. And so that's why he switched gears lately. He's doing much quicker images. He's having a lot more fun. He's taking a lot more enjoyment from the creation process. And he's just setting back how many projects he's getting done a year, which is totally cool. So just don't forget to periodically assess whatever techniques and approach you're doing and simply just be adaptable, shift gears when necessary and balance, you know, what is fundamentally very hard for you versus what you generally like to do. All right. So guys, there's links below for everything. If you want to improve your education, if you want structured exercises and everything, that's all below. We do have room in this month's uh, group mentorship. Feel free to check it out and I'll catch you guys the next video.